Today, we will look at some good features of a technical presentation, which uh, will allow us to ensure that our presentations are impactful as well as communicate what is intended. Before we make a presentation, we should keep in mind that the presentation is actually for the audience and not only for us. So, therefore, the first step that we should undertake in the planning of presentation is to keep in mind who will be the audience. Will the audience consist mainly of students who are still learning the subject or it consists of experts in the area and accordingly we have to tailor the contents of the presentation. Next thing is we have to open very well that means we need to catch the attention of the audience in the first few minutes. If the opening of the presentation is not attractive or does not cause any interest in the audience, there is a chance that we will lose their interest. So, for this some kind of a catch word, some kind of a phrase is always good to have, so that immediately the audience is with you. Many people prefer to make their own templates when they make the presentation. This is a problem because the fonts that are used and the style of the layout may not be pleasing to the eyes. So, since experts have already made some templates which are available, it is better to use standard templates rather than making one of your own. Always start a presentation with some kind of a outline slide. The outline slide actually serves two purposes. One, it allows you to keep a track of where you are and what you are going to highlight in your presentation and also for the audience it gives an indication of the milestones that they can expect in the presentation. Remember, a picture is always uh, more important than words and it is said that a picture is worth a thousand words. Let me give you a small example of this. So, let us look at this. This is a text which describes a curve in aerospace engineering called as the C L alpha curve and you can see the text is goes on quite laboriously. And uh, in this particular example, we are trying to describe this curve for two types of aircraft. Now, instead of writing so many words, just one simple picture which has these two lines clearly indicates what the trends are and actually communicates the same information in a much better fashion. So, would not you rather see the picture shown in the bottom of the presentation or would you prefer someone to actually show you the text? I think the answer is quite clear. Now, having said that a picture is 1000 words, let me also reiterate that if you can use a video, then that can be actually worth maybe a 1000 pictures. Once again, let us see an example of that. Here is an example of text versus video. This is a very long winded text which describes a phenomena about generation of what are called as the wing tip vortices behind an aircraft that is flying. Now, the same information you can see can be very effectively shown by just a video. Watch carefully what happens when this particular video is played. The same information that was mentioned in the previous slide in text can be seen here. So, what we see here is some smoke is being created and now you watch what happens to the air as the plane goes through this wall of smoke. Now, once you see, I will play it once again. So, you see, once you see with your eye what happens it is unlikely that you will ever forget the phenomena that is playing itself in front of your eyes. So, now I think it is quite clear that if possible one should use video clips to illustrate the point especially when you show some phenomena which is happening. Not only that presence of videos and small video clips in a presentation makes it that more attractive 
and memorable. And immediately if someone is uh, losing attention, then you can get back the attention by showing a small video clip. It is also very important for us to keep backup slides in our presentation. Let us see why we need to have a backup slide. There are three main reasons. One is either because of restriction on the time available to you or on the number of slides, you may not be able to show important points. But there is one more very good reason to have backup slides. Invariably, in every presentation, at the end there are some questions. And if you have backup slides which have the answers of probable questions that the audience may ask, not only it shows how well prepared you are, but it helps you in articulating your replies in a much better fashion. Further, in many cases, you need to tell the audience from where you have taken the general source of material, the bibliography, the tools and references. Now, that may be too difficult to show in a PPT. So, you can use the backup slides for that purpose. Although it is a good idea to include a reference below the slide, but sometimes you have to give general references and for that a backup slide is useful. Let us summarize the features of a good presentation. The first point is that to the extent possible, one must use telegraphic language in the presentation. For example, I will show you two statements which can be expressed much better in lesser use of words. So, here is a statement which talks about a general information on drag and it is followed by another general statement that talks about what the drag is. The same information you can communicate in a much better fashion using telegraphic language. So, you notice the information on the right communicates exactly what we have on the left, but it is much more crisp. Another example is another sentence which communicates some information and its telegraphic equivalent. Please note, I have also used underlining. The underlining here allows us to visually distinguish between the two. So, on your right you have drag, lift, resist and support. So, immediately the audience registers the fact that drag is a force that resists, therefore it is the enemy of flight and lift is the force that supports the flight. So, one has to use least number of words which communicate effectively. There is also a very popular rule called as the 7 by 7 rule for PowerPoint presentations. The rule states that you should try to put all information in maximum 7 sentences or points and each point should have maximum 7 words. Anything more than this can lead to loss of information or loss of attention. Font size is one very important consideration. We have a tendency to cram in more information and therefore, we use smaller fonts, but then the whole purpose of the presentation is for someone else to read it and in a very large room people in the back cannot see. So, anything below 20, 24 is considered to be bad. The only exception is when you want to mention the reference of particular source on the bottom of the presentation, you may use size 14 or 16 uh, because you just want to, you do not want the audience to read the whole thing, you just want to tell them that there is a source which has been actually referred. In a presentation, it is always a good idea to go for animation of points because human tendency is to start looking at whatever you show on the screen and if there are too many points on the screen, then it can cause a distraction. Moreover, the audience does not know what you are talking about. So, if you animate the points, they can actually see the points one by one. Also, if it is possible, you should try to dim the previous points because then you ask the audience to focus only on the points which you are elaborating at that point. It is always a good idea to give numbers to your slides so that the audience can note down the slide which contained a particular topic or aspect which they would like to clarify later. If you do not do that, then at the end of the presentation somebody will say, 
go to the slide which had this 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 and you will spend a lot of time going up and down searching for that slide instead if you just get a feedback saying go to slide number 10 such as in this slide it's easy for you to go back there so it's a good idea to put numbers numbering can be either in the bottom center or on the bottom right these are the two most preferred locations for the slide numbers keep in mind that the slide numbers do not overlap any part of your presentation and finally, it is very important that we should quote all the sources that we have used. Uh, for example, we have this picture and I am just trying to show you an example of how you quote it. So, one of the common ways is to put the quoted number in a square bracket. Now, this information is more useful for reports, not exactly for presentations, but I think you get the point that anything you take from anywhere should be quoted. Now, there are many standard referencing styles for quoting the information. This is one particular style which starts with the authors, then it goes to the title and then the specific journal or um, conference and then it gives the date. So, you can choose any style that is uh, useful uh, as far as you are concerned. So, I hope by keeping the points which I have elaborated in mind you will be able to make impactful presentations and therefore, make them more meaningful and useful for the audience. In another presentation, I will talk about certain common mistakes that are made by people when they make presentations. So, see you till then. Thank you.